Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. I'm Jessica Lopez. And I'm Sean Cole. And this is our first look at Shift 2 Unleashed. Mm -hmm. A couple days ago, myself, Sean, and Tommy took a drive up to lovely San Francisco to meet up with EA and check out the game. Yeah, it was a six hour drive. Took forever to get there. It was over in a blink of an eye to me. That's because you slept the whole way. We were driving six hours through the fog. It was insane. And yeah, Sleeping Beauty here, all the way there. Yep, I heard there was smelly cows and all kinds of things. But like Sean said, I slept the whole way, had to get prepared for my interview. Avoided the Central Valley. I did. <laughs> and I got an interview with Jesse Abney, producer of Shift 2 Unleashed, and he was most gracious to us. He greeted us upon our arrival, and we got to play the game for quite a few hours. Yeah, and we brought our own wheel once again, a Fnatic GT2 wheel, and, and why? because I'm told that all the media likes using the hand controller to review games. Funny enough, I don't even know how to use a hand controller. I don't want to know how. So we brought our own wheel once again. Of course we did, and we played for a couple hours. Mm -hmm. And we're going to tell you guys all about what we thought of the title. Unfortunately, we were not able to capture any footage. We were told that was not allowed. It's but you have to wait. You guys will have to wait for that. But we will tell you what we thought about it. But first up, my interview with Jesse Abney, producer of Shift 2 Unleashed. Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. I'm Jessica Lopez and I have Jesse Abney with me here, the producer of Shift 2 Unleashed, upcoming title for the PC, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3. Thank you for joining us. Hello, nice to be here. Okay, so I'm going to start off with talking about the title, The Physics. This title has been said to be the first simulation or more sim-like title from the Need for Speed franchise. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Well, Shift 2 is a follow-up to Shift 1, obviously, and that was our first legitimate foray into authentic racing. And it's really a distinction we have for the Need for Speed franchises, which is uh, really Shift being, you know, track-based, more based in automotive culture and motorsport. And Shift 2 follows onto that in a full progressive way with an all-new elite handling mode, full damage model. Um, over seven different motorsport disciplines expressed in our career, over 120 cars, which are really specific to each of those motorsport disciplines and uh, very specific to those types of car culture that exist within each of those motorsports. So uh, for drift and time attack and retro, as well as uh, muscle car, uh, drag and standing mile type events, you have very specific platforms which have become uh, classic, iconic cars, production vehicles that now you can also fully works modify uh, through a brand new uh, customization and tuning engine in Shift 2. So what are the major differences in the car handling specifically over Shift 1 in Shift 2? Well, it's a lot of refinements, really. A physics engine is something you could consider never complete. It's something that you continue to build on. It's something that you refine. It's something you progress, certainly. You, you build it as a core building block. You continue to uh, improve the experience and certainly improve the ability for the player to fine-tune the physics model to their preference because it is a very subjective thing to build a physics model. It's one person or a, a, a group of people's consensus about how a car feels on a track. Now, EA worked together with Slightly Mad Studios on this game, and you guys are using their engine, I assume. Is it the Mad Engine? Well, I'm sure it has a couple of names as each iteration. You know, they always have code names. But uh, yeah, Slightly Mad Studios is the developer, uh, AAA external developer with a distributed development model around the world. And um, that engine has been retooled, um, really refined again in a lot of ways from the, the rendering to the lighting. We're introducing night racing this time with a new dynamic lighting system, which really plays up the effect of shadows and the headlights and all the elements that occur in a night racing game when the sun goes down. It's, it really changes the, the playing field. Um, it changes the way the AI acts, it changes the way race car drivers act, and I mean all these things are really the, the, the cue points that we're taking from real world events, real world uh, race drivers that we work with on Team Need for Speed and bringing their experience into the experience that we're crafting in Shift 2. So um, full damage model now has a full 
um, you know, play up in the way that the cars are being dismantled based on impact, the particle system, the track degradation as these events progress. The track is becoming littered with pieces of the particle system, pieces of the vehicles based on incidences within the grid are, are being retained on the track. Places where, uh, you know, Armco and tire barriers have become dismantled or dislodged from the side are becoming spread across the track. So uh, cars that crash fully out of the race based on full damage model will be retained off the track and all those visual flourishes that are really part of the authentic race day experience or aspects that we're really refining um, and to create that that overall experience and shift to. Yeah I was playing a little bit earlier and I noticed that the sun was glaring in my eyes and I thought that was very realistic. When will you be able to do night racing? Does that vary on the track when it's day or night or can you choose the weather and the time of day? Yeah certainly through every element of gameplay whether it's through the career you'll be in being introduced to night uh, race events um, throughout the endurance. You'll be you'll be racing in day and at night through quick race. You can choose time of day through the multiplayer uh, lobbying. You can create a night or day race. Uh, there's elements of time of day that we've selected. Also elements of the atmosphere, the weather kind of atmosphere that, that kind of comes in on race days. If you ever race in England, you know there's a lot of dark cloudy skies, a lot of dramatic play up in the atmosphere that sets in at that, you know, for those events. So we're really playing up a lot of the way that lighting plays off, um, creates different moods in the race day and creates different levels of tension really to, to play up the action within the grid. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the cars. Can you tell me how many cars we could expect in this title and whether we can fine tune the cars or personalize them? Yeah, uh, over 120 cars in shift that we're talking about today and always surprises uh, waiting in the wings. But the cars are very specific, again, to the career branches. There's a number of different types of cars from classics to retros, models that have become um, cult classics within each of their automotive uh, cultures and these uh, cult classics are things like the first BMW M3, the the first M1, um, the first Aston Martin as an example are, are very much classic uh, models and their respective car cultures become very popular. Um, the Toyota Supra is, is an example of a current retro ride that people um, now can do full performance customizations, full engine swaps, suspension, a uh, myriad of all the performance customization parts and then tuning and through our all new tuning mode you can now create um, specific layouts for tracks and cars for events as well as online play and save those out uh, through a test and tune and live test and tune iteration. You can really dial those cars in based on uh, again building something up from a flat production model all the way up through a fully works modified race car. Okay, and with the PC, will this title have triple screen support, with such as Ifinity? Yeah, well this is something we support in Shift 1. Quite a few additional features that are available on PC that we've supported in Shift 1. SMS has done a great job about integrating Ifinity triple screen support, which is really just ultra-wide resolution uh, render targets. So when we detect them, we support them. Um, D-Box motion simulation is another easy one. Um, for Shift 1, we supported 3D, and uh, I know that now with the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 supporting aspects of that, we'll, you know, we'll have to see what happens there. Okay, so you talked about controls. Can you tell us what kind of adjustability we'll have? Well, Shift 2 is now supporting a myriad of, of further control options in the industry, both on Xbox, PS3, as well as PC. So lots more game pads, lots more steering wheel types, um, and certainly through each of those, we're allowing the player even more uh, finite adjustments. So complete button mapping um, across all of them, even an Xbox 360 controller, you can re-map all your buttons. And then we're exposing all of the finite adjustments within each of those devices. So anything they're reporting back to us, Shift 2 is now exposing in the UI screen for adjusting steering sensitivity, speed steering sensitivity, dead zone, your your dead zones for gas and brake based on the either the trigger pulls or based on your pedals and a number of the other items that these things uh, basically allow us to report back to the user to allow them to further create the kind of the gameplay experience that they want to race with. Tell us a little bit about Autolog. Will that be available in this title? Absolutely. Autolog is now Need for Speed DNA. So it uh, will exist across all the Need for Speed titles, but exactly you know, what set of features it's going to have included is always going to be dependent on the design. Uh, Hot Pursuit was an arcade racing game, had a very simplistic approach to the information that Autolog presented the user. However, 
Shift 2 Unleashed is a track-based, highly competitive, even online racing game, and the amount of data acquisition that we're actually able to perform with a game like Shift 2 and then report back to the user is a, a, a whole slew of information more than a, a Hot Pursuit example. And in such, you'll be able to do a lot more uh, in-depth uh, profile comparison um, the rewards and the unlock mechanisms that drive the career in Shift 2 are obviously going to re be reported for comparison through Autolog. Uh, matchmaking is certainly uh, able to be handled at a lot more minute level as well as um, just general recommends and the recommendation engine that's running telling uh, you what everybody in your social network is doing as well as what everybody in the world uh, leaderboards as well as the regional leaderboards are all being surfaced just to further incentivize or incite the, uh, the, the sense of competition that occurs on the track. Okay, and what about AI based? Is it is it more focused on AI or player versus player? Well, again, the single player career race is really a competition in the grid with AI, and the AI is a, a, another area of progression where we're still uh, leading into adaptive AI, and AI that really evolves in an organic nature, something that we were building in Shift and, and continuing to refine for Shift 2 is the idea that uh, the AI is more adaptive and not necessarily rubber banded. Um, so that as you're competing in the grid, it's assessing over a number of uh, events how challenging it is. If you're never placing uh, in the podium, it's ratcheting itself back over a series of events to keep it competitive. If you're always placing first, it's ratcheting its difficulty up within a threshold to, uh, to make it more challenging on you. And likewise, there's a number of scenarios that are running through the grid with AI where they are evolving uh, personalities in organic nature. So if you're staying off them and driving conservatively, they should very well be doing the same with you. However, there are blocking maneuvers. There are uh, AI maneuvers where they're missing their breakpoints. Um, they're blowing off the track. They're creating incidences on the track. With the full damage model now, this is creating a lot of, you know, cars that are barrel rolling, tires that are bouncing across the grid, and a number of other elements of action, which are really playing up that, that element of authentic racing um, that we love to see. And really through all that, the AI is uh, never scripted, never the same thing twice, but uh, always very interesting even to sit back and observe as a player, um, figure out when your best chance to compete against them is, and, and look, to, uh, look to beat them uh, really to a lot of breakpoints and a lot of best lines and really uh, get, get to first. Well, you mentioned authentic racing. Will there be such things as pit stops and flags in this title? Not in this particular title, though. I mean, uh, Shift 2 is our foray into authentic racing. It's only the second edition um, of a Need for Speed authentic racing game. And, and we'll continue to iterate. We'll continue to build upon the sim, the, the tenants of what make a sim racer. And we'll continue to explore options which uh, still uphold kind of the fun, exciting element of gameplay, but really look to satisfy our own interest in, in building out a, you know, more authentic racing games as the years progress. Now you've worked on a lot of racing titles, or quite a few racing titles in the past. What can you say is your, your most proud uh, title that you worked on? Well, it's, you know, the, the Shift franchise continues to innovate visually, and to me it's, it's the treatment um, that SMS has brought to, to Need for Speed with the camera systems. Um, last year was the cockpit cam. I've been an ardent chase, chase cam player for years. I love the car models. Um, but as soon as they showed me a view from inside the cockpit without action, I was sold. Um, I never race chase cam anymore unless I'm looking at the car model. And, and this year they've taken one step further into that immersion with the, the helmet cam. And now the helmet cam is a gameplay assisted device. It's actually looking into the corner. It's helping you perform in that view. And it really is that innovation in the visual space which captivates me the most. So it's, uh, you know, my, my favorite need for speed is the current need for speed. And, uh, you know, I love working on Shift 2 because of that visual innovation and that innovation in that authentic racing uh, that we've talked so much about. And it, it really is just in the, the overall excitement that that, um, that kind of design brings to racing um, that, I, that I love the most. I mean, I could go all the way back to the uh, 3DO version of Need for Speed when I started at EA uh, working on that one, which was the most exciting game of the day uh, 15 or 16 years ago. Um, so that's an element of, of, you know, I'm always really captivated by what we're doing on the technology front to innovate, to really present that type of gameplay. And so from 95, my favorite Need for Speed game on 3DO, to uh, Shift 2 Unleashed, my favorite Need for Speed game today on many platforms is pretty much the way I run. Okay, well before we close things out, I'd like to ask you, with such titles, more sim-like titles being released on the consoles such as F1 by Codemasters and Gran Turismo 5 by Sony, how do you think that the Shift title compares to these? 
It's really wholly different. I mean, like Cody's went and did an F1 game when everybody had kind of left that license alone, including us, um, for the last few years and really made a mark with a great experience. Shift 2 comes out with kind of its own standalone experience. It is, uh, you know, it is authentic racing over a myriad of different styles and cultures and types of vehicles and events. And uh, really, it is something wholly different than what Gran Turismo did with their offering, which is really a much more of a driving simulation and uh, much more of a mechanically perceived size and every element down to the windshield wipers of every car and that's really never the experience a need for speed game is trying to capture so we feel we stand alone in in uh, the simulation space it is a real world force physics simulator after all but we're really spicing it up we're really innovating visually we're really innovating in the action the the ai and the the organic nature the ai is innovative in its own right and those elements are really areas we are exploring and, and diving into with vigor that uh, we think we kind of stand alone on. So they all compare because there are four wheels on a track, uh, but we think visually and really just excitement-wise, um, there's, there's nothing quite like what SMS is bringing to market with Shift 2. Okay, well, the Shift 2 Unleashed title is due out March 29th. On behalf of Inside Sim Racing, I'd like to thank you for inviting us here to check out the title, and we certainly look forward to it. Looks like a lot of fun. We've had a lot of fun playing so far what we've seen of it. And thank you, Jesse, for having us out here. Thank you, guys. Hope you all really enjoy it. Game Pod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing. Puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. Game Pod, the choice of champions. Hope you guys enjoyed that interview. I'd like to thank Jesse and also Dana over at EA for having us out there and letting us take a look at the title. And letting us bring our wheel. I know that kind of frightens everybody when we come in. Some of these are, are not even ready for a wheel, but they let us try it out and it worked out. And they gave us all the time we needed. Also, I'd like to thank everyone over at our website and our forums and our Facebook page and Twitter for participating and giving us some questions to ask the guys over at EA. And the forum is where you're going to find a whole bunch of discussion on Shift 2 as it comes online and more and more people get involved with it. And speaking of our forum and our website, everyone get out there and register at our website. Our 100th episode is coming up and we're going to be doing a ton of giveaways. And you must be a member to Inside Sim Racing in order to participate. And that's coming up pretty quick. we got just a few more four shows to go, so we'll be at that 100. Just keep on watching and stay posted for those details. And our final thoughts on Ship 2 Unleashed, I'd like to know what you thought of it, Sean. Okay, well, uh, first of all, the physics are, like I said, a little bit towards that sim direction. You're going to get some things like the balance of the car feels like you'd expect it to. A little too much brake, you're going to get some locking up of the wheels, making it harder to turn throttle and steering the car by the pedal could definitely be done. So all that felt very much in the right direction. Now on the force feedback, I'm going to admit it, they weren't ready for the wheel. So we actually had some good effects. You could feel that it was working, but we seemed to have the reverse effects. And it took a long time. So a lot of the time we spent was actually searching for the right settings for the wheel right. because they actually put a lot of real settings in the game. So you could change the sensitivity, you could change uh, the linearity. So, I mean, there are things about it that, again, are going to be really good for people using wheels and wanting to treat it like a sim. With me playing, I noticed that I felt that the force feedback was a little too strong. I don't know if it's because I'm kind of amateur status, but I just felt that it was a little too strong or that it it gave me a sense that I wasn't expecting like before the crash. Right. So I don't know if, you know, like you said, they weren't ready for us to bring the wheel in and, you know, this is just the beginning phase of the game so it's not its final product yet so it's not we're not really basing our whole answers and thoughts on everything entirely right now right but I guess that's what I thought <laughs> well you know I'm actually glad you said that because maybe the one thing people can take away from this regardless of the sim what you are feeling is reverse steering and when it feels like the wheel just goes away from you and that's super strong pulling the wheel out of your hands that's reverse force feedback regardless of what sim you're at so kind of helpful for anything and keep in mind, guys, this is just our first look at the title. It's not a preview, and it's not a review, so don't hold us to anything we're saying. They weren't completely ready for everything that we came. We walked in the door with our wheel and everything. <laughs> that's right, and that's why we couldn't show you footage either, because this is still a little bit early. I mean, it's coming out soon, but they weren't ready for it to be seen just yet. But we will have that coming up soon. Yep, and as a matter of fact, Dana from EA mentioned to us that we'll, we will be receiving a copy of the title 
before it's released and right. we'll be able to look at it at the end of March also before it's released. So we're going to hold them to that. <laughs> and they have something going on in LA right before release as well. So we'll be there yep. for that and as well. And we'll give you a preview of the title at that point and then we'll review it later on after we have some time to play with it. So that's the way we do it. That's right. So make sure you stay posted to InsideSimRacing.tv. We'll be reviewing this game in the future after it's released and we'll preview it first. And this is our first look. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Checkered flag is out and so are we.